Hello, my name's Danielle Banks. I'm one of the nurses at Davies Veterinary Specialists in Hertfordshire. We're a small animal referral practice. And today I'm joined here by Milo, who is one of our nurse Hannah's dogs. And he's going to be assisting me today and providing some information to you as the owner on how to administer medication. Um, throughout your pet's life, I'm sure at some point you will need to administer medication, whether because they're poorly or because of preventative health care, such as the case of worming tablets. So it's really great to know how to do this in a safe um, and relaxing way for your pet. Um, Milo's really, really used to being handled and is quite happy here um, at the veterinary practice. Um, but certainly some dogs um, and cats aren't particularly happy about having um, medication administered. So the most important thing is to take a calm approach to do, it, to do it and do it at a time where your pet is nice and calm. Certainly just prior to going out for a walk where your pet, uh, your dog may be excited isn't probably the best time to choose. As you can see, we've got Milo up here on a table um, and this can sometimes feel quite a daunting um, place for pets to be. Certainly Milo here is really happy, um, but in the home situation, I'd recommend just doing it on a carpeted floor, um, certainly a non-slippery floor um, where they're gonna feel most calm and secure. Um, you can, of course, do this, um, the administering of medication by yourself, but if you've got somebody who can help you out um, by holding them securely, um, that can certainly be an advantage. If you don't, um, then with dogs, certainly by popping them um, sat in a corner, um, this can be a really useful um, technique because it simply stops them from backing up um, and then, you know, to a certain extent, they're, they're secure and safe um, in that little corner spot. So today you're here, um, Milo is due his um, worming tablet. You already know what's happening, don't you? You're a really good boy. Um, now, some pets are quite happy to take their worming tablet or other medication in food, um, which is fantastic. Um, certainly, if you're attempting to do that, um, I would suggest trying some really smelly or tasty food. So in the case of dogs, um, fresh chicken usually works fantastically well um, or a nice tasty treat. Um, with cats, something really smelly works quite nicely, so tuna or pilchards. Um, but what's really important is we need to definitely know that our pet has had that medication. So if you are putting it in their dinner, um, you know, perhaps put it in a small amount of food first so that you can ensure that your pet has taken that tablet or capsule, um, check that it's gone before then offering them the rest of the food. It's also really important to check with your vet um, or nurse that tablet or capsule can be administered with food because indeed some um, drugs need to be administered on an empty stomach. Um, so when your pet is dispensed or prescribed some medication, your vet or nurse will be able to advise on that. <laughs> Um, right, we're going to now proceed on and um, give um, Milo here his worming tablet. So this has been um, dispensed to him so we know it's the correct dose for him and that's also really important to check that we know that it's the correct medication that he's receiving and the correct dose as well. And all those instructions will, be, um, will have been put on the box that that um, medication has been dispensed in. So what we need to do is um, Milo, unfortunately, won't take his tablets in um, food. So the easiest way to do that is to slowly and gently open their mouth by pulling down on their lower jaw at the front where their small um, in, uh, the teeth are at the front here. Um, and then you're slowly just going to introduce that tablet into the back of their mouth. Once it's in the back of the mouth, then what you need to do is just very gently hold that muzzle closed um, which will just ensure that the, your dog is or cat isn't going to spit that tablet out. And then very gently just stroking um, that neck area because that will encourage them to swallow. Now many people may be inclined to keep that head tilted back in that position um, because it would seem natural to do that. Um, but what you will find, it's actually far more difficult for your pet to swallow in that position. And it's something you can try at home yourself um, just to experience that. So if you have your head in a neutral position, it's very easy to swallow. But if you tilt your head back into that upward position, it's actually quite uncomfortable and difficult to swallow. So while you're holding that muzzle shut, um, just keep the head in a neutral um, position and gently stroke that neck area. 
After a few moments, your pet should swallow. Um, sometimes they can indicate that they've done that by, um, by licking at their lips. Um, and then just check um, after that they have definitely swallowed the medication and they've not actually um, just spat it out. Um, and of course, lots of treats and fuss afterwards um, if that's safe to do so. Right, here we go, Milo. We'll just move you over a little bit. Good boy. You're still keeping an eye on that chicken, I think. So we're going to just gently open his mouth, insert the tablet, and then keeping his head there and just encouraging him to swallow. Really good boy, Milo. There we go. You're looking at me, aren't you? There we go. That's all gone. And then a small piece of chicken afterwards. Is that nice? There's a bit more chicken. <laughs> Good boy. Other medications that you may need to administer are eye drops. Um, so here we've got actually um, <laughs> some lubrication for Milo. Milo's not currently on eye medication, but it's perfectly safe um, just to lubricate um, his eyes. And sometimes um, we will do this as a routine um, for our patients after general anesthesia here at Davies. Right. So eye medication can come in lots of forms. Um, this one here is in a drop form, but you may also um, be prescribed an ointment to administer, um, which comes in a small tube. Um, the drops are designed so that as you open up, they will just literally, by pressing on that bottle, they will administer just one drop. And that's all you will be asked to administer at any one time um, to the eye, just one drop at a time. If you're giving them an ointment, then the amount to administer is just the size of a grain of rice, just to, to give you a frame of reference there. So what we need to do here again is we're going to hold his head very gently by holding that muzzle, which will just stop him moving his head around like so. And as we come to do it, what you need to do is you're just going to pull that upper eyelid up just very slightly while holding that head back. And by doing that, you're just exposing as much of the eye as possible, and then you can drop the, um, the eye drop onto, um, onto that eye. Um, if you come in from behind the eye, as opposed to approaching um, your pet face on, it's far easier to do. So I would always approach from the behind there, just drop it there and drop that um, eye medication onto the eye. So we'll give that a go now. Good boy, Milo. Good boy. So you can see, we're just gently elevating his head, pulling that top eyelid back with my lower finger. And he was an excellent patient there, weren't you? <laughs> now, if you have a number of eye medications to administer, um, you do need to leave at least five minutes between each um, eye medication, quite simply because um, the, the eye only has a certain amount of drug um, which it can hold at any point. So that needs to be absorbed first before administering any more drops. You also need to think about the order in which you administer those drops. So you need to um, administer drops with increasing viscosity. So that basically means you're going to administer the liquid runny drops first um, and then proceed on to the um, more thick drops, the ointments, um, towards the end. <laughs> right. You are so good. Yes, you are. As well as being prescribed um, tablets um, and capsules, sometimes oral medication may become in a liquid form. Um, so for the purposes of this, um, we're just going to be using a syringe, which has just got some water in it. Um, but if you are prescribed some oral um, medication, which comes in a liquid form for your pet, um, you will be given a syringe and just make sure that either your vet or nurses, birth or nurse just runs through how to draw that medicine up. Um, certainly the instructions will be given on the, um, on the packet as with regards to, and the packaging as with regards to the dose. So what we're gonna do here is 
think good boy. We're just going to gently um, insert the syringe into his mouth and we're going to be aiming at it um, just very gently at the roof of his mouth and we'll see how we get on. You are such a good boy. So we're just going to very gently mobilise his head and just do a small amount at a time. You can see here that Milo is very good. Yes, you are. A bit more. You're nearly done. Good boy. Oh, <laughs> having a little smell. There we go. And the final bit, perfect. Do you want some more chicken? Because you were so good. There we go. <laughs> And the final type of medication that I wanted to show you how to administer today would be um, ear drops or ear medication. So this may be um, because you're, maybe your dog's got an ear infection. Um, so from time to time, you may need to administer medication directly into that ear canal. Um, you do need to be careful here, um, particularly if you know they've got an infection. It can be really quite uncomfortable, um, so just be really careful. You may want some to, someone to assist by holding the dog whilst you are doing this. Good boy! For the purposes of this demonstration, um, I'm just going to be using a routine ear cleaner because, um, as I said, Milo's not currently needing any actual ear medication. The important thing to do before administering any ear medication is check that the ear canal, um, the outer ear is clear of um, any wax or discharge. So I'm just going to use here a swab just to gently wipe out the outer ear. Good boy. And as you can see, Milo is so good. So we'll just gently clear. Put your head down, darling. That's a good boy. There we go. So I'm just using my finger, covered by the swab, just to gently clean around inside the ear. And Milo has got lovely clean ears. There's nothing on there, is there? Now for some dogs, it may be fairly routine that you need to use um, an ear cleaner, because some dogs do just naturally um, have quite waxy ears. But by the looks of it, you don't, do you Milo? So all of the um, medications will come with a sort of a nozzle syringe, and that is something which you need to place um, just into the entrance of the ear canal. With the ear cleaner, you're just gonna give a good squeeze um, of the bottle. Good <laughs> boy. Um, but with some ear medications, you will be told how many drops to apply into the ear canal. Good boy. So what we're going to do is, we're just going to pull the ear flap back so we can visualise the ear and just visualise where that ear canal is. Good boy. And we're just going to, oh, you want to have a little look. Sometimes the animals want to just see what you're doing. Right, good boy. And we're just going to gently pop it into the ear, give it a little squeeze. Good boy. Now, the important thing to do here is give the ear a really good massage. And the purpose of this is it just um, encourages those ear drops, that ear medication, just to go down the ear canal. And you can see he's quite actually enjoying that. Good boy. Does that feel nice? There we go. You're all done now. So that concludes our demonstration of administering some uh, common types of uh, medication to your, to your pets. Um, other things to, to think about is just making sure that you are fully aware of the medications that your pet has been prescribed. Certainly here at Davies Veterinary Specialists, a vet or nurse will go through a full uh, discharge appointment with, with you as an owner, and they will explain all the medications that your pet has been prescribed and why. Um, and there'll be a full um, dosing instructions listed as well as on the packaging, but also on the discharge note, which all owners are given. And contained within that discharge note, there'll also be information about when your pet's next dose of medication is due. So that's really important for you as an owner, if you're taking your pet home from a vet, um, from the vets, is just to find out when their next dose is due. Good boy and also find out any special instructions. So for example, I've already commented that some medications need to be given on an empty stomach. 
Other medications, you may be advised as an owner to wear gloves whilst you're administering them. And certainly the veterinary practice should provide you with a pair of gloves if that is the case. For some owners, if you've got a pet coming home with a lot of medication, then I'd um, recommend just creating yourself a small chart just to make sure that you're keeping an eye and making sure that you're not missing any of those doses. It's really important that you finish any course of drugs um, and by creating yourself a small chart, that will ensure that you don't miss any doses um, and um, you, know, you can just tick them off as you go. <laughs> Other things you can do um, is create um, a, you know, an alarm on your phone just as a reminder as well. <laughs> I hope that has given you a really useful um, insight into some of the medications that you may be prescribed or your pet may be prescribed um, and it'll be useful for you. Thanks ever so much.